now we've introduced all the elements of the model. We've made all the assumptions we need to, to make on production function, utility function, uh, how pricing is set, uh, the matching function. Uh, so now we, we're in a position to uh, actually solve the model. Uh, so uh, before we solve the model, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the solution of the model. That is, um, you know, what are, what are the elements that we are looking for when we solve the model and what can we use to find these elements? Um, so um, essentially solving a model means figuring out the value of all the variables in the model as a function of the parameters of the model. Um, and so here uh, we'll see it's going to be um, pretty simple. Uh, so <clears throat> in, in, the, in our model of Slack, we'll see that actually we'll have um, six variables that we have to find. And of course, we'll have six independent conditions to find them. So we'll have to find six variables and using six independent uh, conditions. And, and, and here, you know, we are, of course, we have as many variables as independent conditions. So our model, you know, is a non-degenerate. Um, so what are these six variables and what are these uh, six conditions? Um, so let's, uh, let's see. So we look at all the variables that we have. <coughs> Give their name. We we'll look at which condition they have to satisfy and give a short interpretation. You know, in terms of methodology, um, this is something that we, you should always do once you develop a model, especially a macro model. Um, at some point, once you've laid out all the assumptions, and you've um, started to figure out how the model works and you get to the solution stage. It's important to make sure that you list all the variables and you check that you have all the conditions to determine this variable to make sure that uh, your model is uh, that your model is well defined and you have exactly as many conditions as variable and therefore you're able to actually solve your model. Um, so here, which variables do we have? So um, of course we have uh, <coughs> so we have a model in which you know we, all the households are the same. There is no heterogeneity. So here I'm focusing directly on the aggregate variables that we're going to look for. And of course we know that at the individual level. Um, all households will be exactly the same, all trades will be exactly the same. Um, so first variable will be the price level, which we denoted by P. So this is a, <coughs> uh, the price level or the price of services, uh, which is the same in any relationship. So what gives the price level? Well, this is easy in the model. We said that uh, the price was just given by a price norm. So we have a condition just by assumption that P the price norm and the only other, and that price norm we said could be a function, uh, you know, it could be a function of uh, tightness. Okay, and the interpretation is that um, the price is given by the price norm. All right, so this is set up. <clears throat> of course, you know, as long as we have the tightness, we'll be able to figure the price, but here we have one condition to find um, the price. Okay, so next, what do we have? Well, next we have uh, money, the M. So this is just money holdings of each household, but of course, which is also aggregate money holdings. So here 
we just know that m is just equal to mu, the endowment of money in the economy. Um, and how did we derive that? Well, we, we derived that just by aggregating all the budget constraints of all the households and using the fact that you know, any good that's sold is a good that's bought by some of the household for the matching function. So that at the end, the money holdings have to be equal to the endowment of money mu. Um, so this just comes from the budget constraint. Once you use a budget constraint uh, of all households, you get that necessarily the amount of money they hold is just the endowment of money. All right, that's our second variable. Um, then what do we have? Well, then we have output, y. Um, it's just the output <coughs> of services in the economy, which is just the same as um, the sales of services in the economy. Um, so what gives y? Well, we know that um, how many uh, services are purchased, that's determined by uh, the aggregate demand. We know that um, the aggregate demand captures the amount of services that are going to purchase by household who want to maximize their utility subject to a budget constraint. Uh, and so uh, Y has to satisfy that aggregate uh, demand. So Y is going to be given by the aggregate demand which was denoted YD, which depends on uh, tightness and depends on the price. Okay, uh, And <clears throat> That just reflects uh, utility uh, maximization by households, uh, or optimization by households. So you know that our output would necessarily be given by this aggregate demand uh, that we've obtained by looking at how households behave. So that's number three. Number four, uh, fourth variable is C. So this is not this is not output, but consumption of services. So how can we compute consumption? Well, we know that consumption and output are tightly related. And in fact, what we saw is that consumption is just <coughs> output divided by one plus tau x, where tau x is a, a matching wage. Um, okay, because we, we said that for uh, any unit of consumption you want to consume, in fact, you have to purchase that unit plus tau x to cover the matching cost. And so, so these things, <coughs> uh, so this equation that gives you once you know output, that, uh, you know, it, it, reflects the the, it reflects the presence of a matching cost, cost of posting a vacancy. All right, so um, let's see, maybe it's useful to list this. So this is, uh, this is number one, number two, number three, number four, okay. Um, variable number five <coughs> is V, number of visits to shops. What gives V? Well, we know that um, through the matching function, uh, we know that each visit is successful with a probability Q of X, um, the buying probability. Um, so as a result, if households want to purchase Y services, um, then necessarily uh, they have to uh, conduct Y over QX uh, visits to be able to purchase this. Okay? So this comes naturally uh, from the matching function. And this is a direct reflection of the matching, the presence of the matching function. Because uh, notice, so let's see if we, uh, 
v is equal to y over qx. You can just rewrite this as y is equal to v times qx. <coughs> Um, and you know, and, and that's just what comes out. Uh, that's just what comes out of the matching function because qx, you know, that qx is just a matching function uh, measured at v and k divided by v. So this can be rewritten as y is equal to m of v and k, which just tells you that the number of cells will be uh, given by the matching function once you take into account the amount of services that are for sale and the number of uh, visits. And so these, these things are just equivalent. Okay, so this is just a manifestation of the presence of the matching function that gives us the number of visits like this. And uh, variable number six and last is X or market tightness. Okay, so what gives uh, X? Well, X is just by definition x is equal to v over k, v number of visits, k number of services that are for sale. Uh, and that's just uh, def by definition of the tightness. And so here we have our structure of our uh, let me zoom out so we can see better. Here we have the structure of our solution. Um, so solving the model means figuring out the value of these six variables uh, as a function of the underlying model parameters. Um, and to do that, we have six conditions that are all independent, you know, budget constraint, price norms, the utility maximization, the presence of a matching cost, the presence of a matching function, and the definition of tightness. Um, <clears throat> so here we have uh, we have this, and now the challenge uh, is going to be to put together this condition, reshuffle them to be able to find a simple way to compute uh, all uh, the variables in the model. Uh, 